Okay, okay, we are gearing up. Just give everybody a moment here to join the live stream. Seems like there's already a bunch of you here. This is awesome. I'm really excited to be here back for another meeting. Hope you guys like my intro music. I just kind of put it together myself here for a moment as I was coming in. I don't know if anybody can guess what this music is, but uh, if you can, I'll be super, super impressed. And if you can guess it, I will give you, uh, I'll send you actually a bunch of these buttons that I have here, these fancy orange gold shot farm buttons. Does anybody know what song this is? Are there any guesses out there? Hello, everybody. What's going on? Whoa, there are so many people here. I can't believe it. This is crazy. Oh, Ken Shaw, you say you can't hear it. Oh, okay. Maybe you guys can't hear it. Maybe I don't have it all set up right. Video game, Mary Swanson. Pablo on the keyboards, Julie Singh. Um, no, all right. This, probably, this game's probably not going to work. It's um, Francis Farmer will have her revenge by Nirvana as played by me on a synthesizer. So there you have it. <laughs> all right. Just a goofy way to, to start things off. Good to see everybody here tonight. I see Rose, one of our moderators. Thank you, Rose, for being here. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I, I'm so excited. Thank you, the Woodsman. I really appreciate that super chat. That's really kind of you. And I also appreciate Caden's super sticker. Way to go, guys. Um, yeah, this is good to see you. I'm really glad to be back for another farm meeting. You know, this happens every first Wednesday of the month here at Goldshaw Farm. I try to have like an hour or two where I sit down with you guys and hang out to talk about some of the stuff going on the farm, all the miscellaneous things that don't fit into a video. Hey, Scott, thank you for joining as well. I really appreciate Scott from Two Quacks and a Cluck um, and Five Clucks, actually. I think they have more chickens than one. <laughs> actually, no, they have a lot of chickens down there. Um, so yeah, there's a lot to talk about. It's been a busy month here at Goldshaw Farm. Um, we've had a lot of new stuff happening. We've had a lot of um, a little drama. I guess I'll talk call it drama. Uh, everybody's saying this is the volume okay. Um, I'm seeing a couple of folks say that the the volume's super low. How do I handle stress? I will get to your questions too in a minute. I got a couple things I want to give everybody a rundown for, and then we'll we'll dive right in. I see Don from Little Mountain Life. Good to see you, Don. Um, this is going to be so much fun. I am looking forward to it. Wow, there are so many people here. The chat's already going fast, and I put it in slow mode. But I'm so grateful that you guys are here. So let's start with some of the updates. The first update I will give you guys is about the cattle. I know everybody's dying to hear about the cattle. What's going on with the cattle? When are we getting the cattle? You know, we were actually, like I said in another video, supposed to get one group of Scottish Highland cattle, and we ended up not getting that group of cows, or, or I should say it was like a couple steers and a couple heifers and a couple cows. But we have officially purchased, I can say this, officially purchased, contracted, everything's set, um, five Scottish Highlander cattle. Um, specifically, we have purchased uh, two female cows who we believe are pregnant. They are about one's, I think four years old. The other is five years old. They are proven mothers and they should be calving probably in like the June ish time period. And so I'm looking forward to that. So we got those two cows. We also have two uh, heifers that are both about two years old that we think both of those gals are pregnant as well. Neither of them are proven mothers. So, um, Oh, wow. Uh, wow. Thank you, JK. That's super generous. Um, <laughs> so, so neither of them are proven mothers, but, but we're hoping that they will become mothers very soon. And then we're getting like a, a, a steer who's about 14 months old. So in theory, or 15 months old, I should say. So in theory, he's like just a little bit too young to process and send off to the freezer, but we'll probably keep him around all through next year and just let him get nice and big. And come fall, he'll be probably the first cow that we're or first, cat, first animal that we're harvesting here on the farm. And so we have all of those cattle. They are purchased. They are ours. We're just got to get them here and get them situated. I will absolutely be making videos about it. 
probably you will see a video about it here on YouTube, probably not for two weeks because I'm usually about two weeks behind these days in terms of, you know, shooting something and finally getting it edited and posted. But um, hey, Mallory from the Quebec Homestead, what's going on, Mal? Um, congratulations, by the way, on 13,000 subscribers. Uh, so, so that will happen um, soon. If you guys want the most instant updates, though, I would strongly suggest you follow our, our TikTok and our Instagram because you'll start seeing videos about the cattle there first. And so if you really want, like, if, if you really care about it, like finding out as soon as it happens, go there. If you don't and you're not as feeling like that, that's as urgent and you want to see the good story, the long, you know, 20 minute video that tells you all about how the cattle got here. Um, I would say hold out for the YouTube video, which will probably be in about two weeks. Um, so JK, I want to, again, thank you for that super chat and, um, really try to answer your question. How are we doing? So how am I doing? How's Allison doing? I'll start with Allison. So Allison's good. She is actually working tonight at the hospital. She, she works as a nurse practitioner in the emergency room in a local hospital here. Um, honestly, work's a bit stressful for her these days. Um, you know, particularly with all the COVID stuff, the hospital numbers are going up, they're busier and busier, they have less beds. And, and so it's pretty stressful. It's a bit frustrating for her in, in certain instances as well. Um, and, and so that part is tough. Um, and then, um, I'm doing pretty good. I've been crazy busy, which I'll be talking to you guys about all night here. Um, and then the other thing I'll tell you guys is Saturday is a special day for Allison and me because Saturday is our 10 year wedding anniversary. Can you guys believe that 10 years? Um, yeah, we, we, we've been, let's see. So we started, we were dating for about two years. So we met in 2009, like spring of 2009 and we got married on in October of 2011. And so, yeah, here we are 10 year anniversary, crazy how quick it goes. So that's how we're doing. Thank you, JK, for that super chat. And Nicole Davis, congratulations on the super sticker. Thank you for the support. Really, really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, that's how things are going. Hey, Kathy, North Star Prep Stetter. Thank you, my friend, for being here. So guys, I want to just a shout out for all of the moderators that we have here. So, you know, um, Kathy from North Star Prep Stetter, Rose from Wholesome Roots, um, I saw Don from Little Mountain Life, um, Mallory from Quebec Homestead. I think Jack from uh, uh, the Mindful Homesteads here. I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. If they are, just tell me. And I'm, I'm, oh, oh, and Scott from Two Quacks and Five Clucks. So thank you, everybody. Really, really appreciate that help. If you guys want to help them out, it would be mean a ton to me. And uh, yeah, um, I, yeah, I just want to be very appreciative because it, honestly, without the moderators, this wouldn't happen. At this point, these things get so chaotic and, and crazy. It's hard to do it without their help and support. So thank you. Um, so the Creek Kid asks a question um, and I want to answer it really well. And I also want to say uh, to Dad Easy, thank you for the super chat. And I will answer your question too in a minute, but let me hit the Creek Kid here first. So um, no real update on the hound hunting situation just yet. Um, I'm trying to set up a meeting, a couple of meetings, honestly, uh, trying to meet with the governor and talk about the issue. So far, uh, his office has given me the Heisman. I know a lot of folks have been emailing his office, and I'm hoping that that's going to get some more attention and hoping to, frankly, get more attention to the issue in the media. And so I'm, I'm working to do that right now. Um, the other thing I'm trying to do is I'm still trying to meet with Butch Spear. You know, we were supposed to actually meet this past Sunday and he, <laughs> there's a couple of things that happened. <laughs> so I should probably tell this whole story. So um, Butch and I were supposed to meet. So Butch was the the old Santa looking claws guy who came to the farm um, it, with, to get his hounds that had tree to bear here on our farm. He and I were supposed to meet because he's actually the president of our state's bear hounding association. So we were going to meet try to talk about the situation, try to see, I don't know, maybe there's some sort of way to meet a compromise, which I really love to find. Anyway, last week, Butch went on this hound hunting podcast and did like an hour interview with the, the dude on the hound hunting podcast. And I don't know, I, I got to say they were, I was frustrated to listen to it because they like were talking a lot of about me and the farm and speculating a lot about me and the farm and actually not having all their facts right. If you actually saw that video I put out the other day, I, I actually included like a one minute excerpt where they were saying crazy, crazy things like Toby dog is a trained killer. 
um, which is completely insane. <laughs> and so when I put that video out, I guess he got mad and I guess some of his bear hounding friends got mad at him. And so he like called me all in a huff saying he's not going to meet. He also called me to say that he's actually been getting harassed. And, and so I do want to speak on that one, which which I'll say, you know, I think harassment, bullying, threats, any of that sort of stuff is never, ever, 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 ever OK. I know it's not you guys that are doing it. I know that a lot of people are seeing this topic, seeing what the bear hounder is doing, getting mad at them and responding in a way where they might have good intention, but it's just not the right way to act. And so just so everybody knows, I do not support that in the least bit. I think it's wrong and you shouldn't do it. I believe respectful dialogue. I believe in having conversations. I believe in some transparency and talking about some of these things. And so really guys, um, I'm hoping to get that conversation together. I'm also trying to actually reach out to the podcast that was talking about me last week, but apparently they've like ghosted me. Like they don't want to talk to me in the least bit. I, you know, I teased them a little bit with those excerpts from their podcast. And I don't know, ever since then they've gone radio silent. So that, that is what it is. So dad easy kid. I do want to say thank you for the super chat and answer the question. I feel like this comes up all the time. So despite the fact that we have been married for 10 years, Allison and I do not have children. And I will say, Probably by the time we're celebrating our 50th anniversary, we still don't won't have children because honestly, we don't want children. I, I, I think a lot of people assume that the default is that you get married and you have kids, but that's not always the case. You know, you can live very happy, fulfilling lives. You don't have to procreate. You know, you can find legacy in a lot of other places. And, and it's just something that, you know, even when we were dating, Allison and I talked about it a lot and, and both felt like, no, nah, that's not necessarily for us. And I think that that's Part of why we're such a good match. Um, not the only reason, but, you know, being on the same page to for big life goals like that, I think is, is really important. And so, uh, yeah, there you go. Thank you, Gabriel Badwolf, for that. Uh, Toby is absolutely a trained floof, not a trained killer. Um, get a black Angus bull and a donkey. No more dogs. <laughs> um, well, thank you for the super chat, Paraplaneta Missionary. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm actually going to be focusing in on just sticking with the Scottish Highland genetics, at least first, maybe at some point I'll start doing hybrids. Um, but, uh, it'll be Highlanders. Um, and, uh, yeah, I will say that, um, donkey maybe someday, but definitely dog. And I want to talk about dog in a minute, but there's a couple other super chats. I just want to address too. I really appreciate the support. Okay. I got Gabriel saying Toby is a train floof. Jen Paul, happy October. Do you have a fall recipe you really like to cook? Um, hmm. So there is an old video I made out there, and, and I'm not sure if, if Kathy North Star Prep Stutter, the Link Ninja, can find it, um, where I actually made uh, pumpkin, maple syrup, pumpkin st stewed in milk. It was like this old-fashioned recipe I, I I found and I tried to make it and it was pretty bad, but it's definitely a fall recipe. It's a funny video. It's an old video, but um, I don't know. Maybe Kathy can drop a link in there, but uh, yeah, there you go. Wow, guys, I am going so slow here tonight on all the uh, chats here. Wade Duvall, curious to hear about your favorite ADHD coping mechanisms. Hopefully this is okay. I know you're, you mentioned a few older videos. No, I think it's a hundred percent. Okay. I, I, you know, I, I think a lot of times there is stigma with talking about problems that you face, you know, whether it's, you know, mental health issues or, you know, other health issues or just struggling with something, you know, like having like an ADHD brain like I do. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, so, so, so wait, I will say number one, I, I have not, you know, okay, before I get into any of this please know this is my personal situation. You should be talking to a trained mental health professional and other doctors. So don't be taken to some medical device from some farming dude in Vermont. Not a good idea, but here's what I personally do. Um, I actually had been taking um, medicine for it, um, but stopped about, I don't know, six, seven years ago, just found that it wasn't really quite right for me. What I do is I have found that exercise is actually a really big way to help. Um, I do take an herbal supplement known as ashwagandha. Um, I also find that rituals and routines and patterns are super huge to being my friend. So like I have a certain set way that I start my work day each day. When I sit down to edit, I have a certain way of working. I have some organization systems that 
for better or for worse. <laughs> like, I don't know if you can see those wooden boxes on my bookshelf back there. That's how I'm sorting things that I need to go through and like the order I need to go through them in. Um, and so, so those are some of the things that I do for sure. Um, so I hope that helps Wade. All right. I know I'm missing more super chats. I'm so sorry, guys. Thank you, Preston. I really appreciate that support. Um, yeah, that is awesome of you. And Barbie Lowrider, just a little cookie money for my favorite farm duo. <laughs> okay, I will, I will, bar, Barbie, next time I'm at the feed store this weekend, I will pick up some treats for Toby Dog, Pablo, Molly, and Ginny, which uh, here, I'm going to give you guys a quick update on Ginny because I think people might be wondering. You'll see a video on this probably in this coming week, but um, uh, she actually had surgery the other day. Um, so, you know, as you know, she's a kitten. She's about five months old now, which is old enough to get spayed. And so I believe that when you have outdoor cats like that, it's important to control the population and not let them go out there and reproduce like crazy. And so she is actually locked away in the barn right now. So she's not wandering the farm for the next week because she just had surgery and she's recovering. She's doing really well, but um, that's how she's doing. And I'm sure she'll appreciate, appreciate some of that too, even though you maybe didn't want her to have that. Hey guys. Hey, Freedom Food Farm. What's going on, buddy? I've been liking your fencing videos, by the way. Not fencing like fencing, but fencing like fencing. <laughs> um, hey, Max Hendricks. Do I despur my roosters? No, I do not actually. Um, and I am actually gearing up to butcher a whole bunch of roosters. Um, and uh, yeah, that... I, you know, I, I could, I just, I don't know. I just don't have a need. My two main roosters, General Washington and Alexander Hamilton, um, have been really good and for the most part, not too aggressive. I a hundred percent agree with that, David. Thank you. Um, oh, well, I, I appreciate you saying that too. Green Acres, Michigan Dairy Goats. And Stealth Pilot Gaming asks, when is the next video? Well, the next video is going to be tomorrow morning or tomorrow. Um, and just so you guys know, I've been like playing around with my upload times just because um, YouTube is telling me that I need to upload my videos later based on my analytics. I don't know. Just give you some inside baseball there. So you probably see it like one o'clock tomorrow will be the next video. Um, here, I'm going to give you the sneak preview. I forget which video is going up tomorrow, but um i'll tell you in a second here which one's coming thank you for that super chat there scott bishop and uh i think these shirts are actually discontinued so these were my old all ducks go to bed shirts i'm gearing up to put up some new merchandise probably the beginning of november um but yeah unfortunately i don't think you can get these anymore maybe i, I, I could sell it to you buddy <laughs> i don't know maybe I'll, I'll ship it in the mail speaking of the mail by the way as i'm bounce from one topic to the next with this ADHD brain of mine. Guys, see these stickers? I still have a whole bunch more of them. And so if you send me a self-addressed stamped envelope, um, I'm happy to send you free stickers. I know a lot of folks here in the chat probably already have them, uh, but just send it to Goldshaw Farm, P.O. Box 225, Peachum, Vermont, 05862. That's Goldshaw Farm, Peachum, Vermont, 05862. What you do is you send an envelope with a stamp and your address on that envelope as the, the send address. And um, what I do is I will open your envelope that you send me, take the envelope that you sent, jam these two stickers in there, pop it back in the mail, and then it shows up like a week later. And so if you guys want your very own Release the Quacken and Toby Dog stickers, uh, just send me an envelope. Uh, Goldshaw Farm, P.O. Box 225, Peachum, Vermont, 05862. Um, okay. There was a question about next video. So let me get back to that. So the video tomorrow is going to be all about, oh, so I have a crazy idea about my cattle and, um, how they're going to, um, graze. And one of the things I want to do in terms of solar powder power and how the cattle graze. And so it's going to be a video all about that. Thank you. Paraplanetta missionary. I I'm a hundred percent up on the donkey train. Like Look, I, I'm going to focus in on Livestock Guardian Dogs, I, and I do have some puppy news that I need to share with you before the end of this live stream. But I will just say, I, I think I want to focus on that first. Once I get confident with the cattle, that might be the time that I try to introduce a donkey to like hang out with the cattle. That's sort of the thinking I have in my head. Oh, Lily Rose, thank you that. I, I appreciate that. 
you would love to see some cooking videos. You know, every time I do a video for a sponsor like Butcher Box, um, which I just did one last week. Uh, actually, oh no, no, it's coming up. Oh, there is a cooking video. There, there's like a cooking segment in an upcoming video. Um, actually, the video that's going to be out on Saturday, which is all about Toby Dog and Ginny Barncat, will feature a cooking segment. Candice W Dub W Dub. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great name, by the way. Um, I don't think it was a ghost, Matt Tibbetts. I think it's only I got the Toby Dog portrait behind me and. I don't know, maybe Lil Barncat came in and then she went back out. Um, I think I'm the only one here. If not, it'd be kind of scary and crazy, right? Because this house is like, uh, I don't know, 180 years old. So, uh, yeah. I'm hoping I'm not missing any other. Hey, thank you for the support, Alain. Been a fan since best non-farming book. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you watching for so long and I appreciate the support. Um, hey, no Tumbus Bumbus. Thank you, by the way, for that super chat. And Andrea McKenzie, um, do you think it's worth it to focus on something technically not about hound hunting, like pushing for geo fencing in order to enforce property lines or less draconian posting cross rules? Um, so, so Andrea, I think that's a great question, and thank you for the super chat. So let me address it. Um, yeah, I think there are certain elements about it because again, my issue isn't so much the hound hunting. Like I said, I personally don't like hound hunting. But I also personally don't like, uh, I don't know, what else do I like? Um, I don't like uh, Babylon 5. <laughs> it doesn't mean I'm pushing for laws against Babylon 5. And, and so, uh, like, you know, what I am concerned about and what I don't like is I don't want hound hunting happening on my property. And so, yes, the geofencing type of thing could work. But the way the Vermont laws are written, it gives some very exclusive permissions to hound hunting that allows essentially trespass to happen in the name of hounds pursuing game. And, and so that's why I've put the focus there. I think geofencing would be useful. Like if there was a way to have an alert go when somebody crosses my property line and, you know, have that send a tone that recalls the dog automatically, I'd be all for something like that. It's just, I don't know. Some folks seem very against it in the hound hunting community. Um, the posting rules, I think, are also horrible here in Vermont. They are extremely onerous on the landowner. And I think they they um, are, frankly, even kind of like ableist, right? Like, like, so I'm a 41-year-old guy. And it took me a good chunk of a day to go entirely around our property a couple weeks ago and put up all new posting signs. You know, I'm walking around in the middle of the forest with my phone, trying to figure out my borders, trying to figure out if I'm 400 feet between signs. And it's like really hard to do well. It's really hard to verify. It's really easy for somebody to rip down a sign. And if I was like an 80 year old guy, I don't think I could do that. And, and so the idea that like you, you're not thinking about other people being able to post their land, but maybe they don't want hunting on their land. I don't know. I, I, I don't think that that's good. So yes, I think you know, less draconian posting laws would be a good thing. Ken Shaw, who, by the way, guys, Ken Shaw isn't related to Goldshaw Farm, but he's like one of the oldest viewers of Goldshaw Farm. He is a great guy, wicked supportive, and, you know, goes way, way back. And so, Ken, I always appreciate your support. So let's see what your, your statement is. As someone who grew up hound hunting long before, I think it's best ban or at least severely restrict the range. Of the yeah, I mean, I, I think that is a big part of it to me, too. It's you know, the idea that you could be a mile or two away from your dogs and not be able to recall them, that bothers me. That that to me says you don't have control of that animal. If you're, you know, a couple hundred feet away from a dog, that's much more manageable. And again, I have much less issue with that. Ghost ducks. <laughs> Uh-oh. I think there's some ghost conspiracy theories happening right now. Um, I'm Scruffy. Thank you for that super chat. I really appreciate it. And no Tumbus Bumbus again. Now that's not true, ACP. I try to give them priority because I feel bad if I didn't, um, but I, I always try to respond to a lot of folks. Did you plan to outsource some of your jer beef jerky process or are you going to do it all yourself? So Piper Lily, that's a good question. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet. So I have sort of two scenarios I'm still working through right now. One would be I do all the production myself and maybe hire somebody to help me with that. The other is I outsource it. 
the problem with the outsourcing I'm finding right now is like the business model and like the like, hey, am I making enough money to make for this to make sense to do doesn't quite work. Um, and so I might have to do it. And then also the way I want to produce it, which is actually making more biltong than actual beef jerky. Um, nobody does that. And so I might end up having to do it myself. There is a food incubator, like so a, 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 like a organization. I think it's a nonprofit in Hardwick, Vermont. So it's like a couple towns over from me here. And um, they basically have like a commercial kitchen and they have infrastructure and they can help you. And so I'm actually planning on working with them to try to get through some stuff over the course of the winter. And so I don't know. I haven't figured that one out yet, but I will hopefully soon. Hey, Christina Sharoma. By the way, Christina, thank you again for your support, as always, from Quackulant Little Duck to the Quackin. Oh, thank you. By the way, guys, I need a suggestion. So I have this gigantic bag, and I have probably like six bags like this of buttons because I do have some bummer news. I am not going to be at Homesteaders of America. So my plan was to actually be – I was supposed to be a speaker there, but unfortunately I had to pull out uh, a week or two ago because uh, just – couple of things. I don't even really want to get into it, but so I won't be there, but I had like all these buttons printed up and I was going to give them out at HOA. And unfortunately um, I don't. And so I'm, I want to, what I want to probably try to do is figure out how much postage it takes to send one of these um, because I think it's probably more than the stickers. And what I'll do is I'll actually send them out to people because I have so many. And if you ever see me in person, by the way, like this, this goes out to anybody because I'm going to keep a ba couple bags of these in my truck. If you ever see me in person, like if I'm out at the store or wherever, don't ever be shy and like not say hello. And if you do, there's a good chance I will, or if you ask, you feel free to ask, I will give you a button. Um, so yes. Mallory's asking, how are my bees? My bees are good. I need to harvest the honey and get them into winter mode. And so to get them into winter mode, I actually have built like a, uh, foam cover to put over the hives to keep them warm. Abby Smith, what's biltong? So biltong is a South African form of dried meat. And so it's air dried and it's less, um, like they use less like salt and flavorings to it. And it's more like the meat flavor. And usually they sell it like in a chunk and then you slice it really thin and eat it like freshly cut. It's amazing. Like, if you ever have a chance to have biltong, I went to South Africa about a decade ago and I fell in love with it and um, strongly recommend it. If I need most design school. Yeah, no, that's a great suggestion. All right. Jack Thiessen says it's not right to get your non Vermont followers involved in crusade against that should be decided by people in Vermont. Um, Yes and no. So, so I, I do believe that, you know, kind of the ultimate decision rests with the people of Vermont. So hundred percent believe with that, but I think, you know, for, for others to comment on something that's happening in another state is kind of normal. I mean, look what's happening in Texas as they've rolled out some fairly draconian laws. Um, there's been a lot of comment from folks all over the country. I think, you know, you know, kind of, commenting and saying, Hey, state X or Y, we're not comfortable with this practice or that practice from folks out of state, I think has happened for, for a very, very long time and sort of an American tradition. And so I don't think it's negative from that standpoint. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you might not agree, but that's, that's, that's how I feel. Oh, okay. I have to answer this question because Kelsey Ray is asking a very good one. Um, so I haven't been working on it at all. I think I told this, you guys this in the last um, the last video, last live stream video. Like um, I've just kind of set it aside for the summer months. I'm hoping that probably in November I'm going to start working on it again. And my goal is to get it done so I can have it published next year at some point. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I, 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 I would not say that that's necessarily the case. I think there's a lot of things that are contributing to the downfall of America. <laughs> so Justin, I have a whole day off tomorrow for my day job. And my whole plan is Alfred and I are going to be out back working on the hoop house. Uh, we have to bust butt to get it done. But uh, that is definitely my plan. 
Oh, thank you, Maybelline. I appreciate the super sticker. Okay, guys. Let's talk about the puppy. I think a lot of folks are curious about the puppy and the puppy, what's going on with the puppy plan and all that good stuff. So let's get into that. So here's what I will say. I have a puppy reserved. I have a breeder I'm, I'm working with. They are a great breeder. I'm not ready to announce them yet. I will probably start talking about this puppy as soon as it's born, but it has not been born yet. Um, and so stay tuned, fingers crossed. I, I'm really excited for it. It's a really incredible breeder I'm working with. I got to figure out how I'm going to get the dog here. So that's one issue I'm still working with. Um, but we do have a female puppy identified. The genetics for her are great. They match up well with Toby and that they're like completely unrelated. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I'm very excited. I do love Toby. Have you ever thought about adding a herding dog, like a border collie? <laughs> so, you know what? I think someday I, I will add a herding dog. Um, I don't have plans as that, like the next immediate thing. Cause it's, this gets back to like an overall philosophy I have with my farm. I want to sort of do things a little bit slower than some folks might like, because I want to do it right. You know, for example, I wanted to raise Toby right and have him be a good livestock guardian dog who, um, you know, really knows what, like how he's supposed to behave. And, and, you know, that's important to me. And so I took my time. Now I took my time to find the exact right puppy to add to the farm. Um, and, and so because of all of that, I would say that, you know, I don't know, give me two years. And I bet by the time I'm settled with the cattle, by the time I'm settled with the puppy, I probably would be ready to add like a, a border collie or an Australian shepherd or even like a corgi or something as a herding dog, but, uh, not yet. And so, uh, stay tuned. Sun sleeper. Thank you. Do you have children? Oh, like I said, nope, no children. Okay, how far away is the puppy Piper Lily asks? Um, I mean, distance wise, a couple thousand miles. Uh, time wise, I would expect the puppy to be here, I don't know, late January, early February, something like that. Um, so that yeah, that would be my guess. Y yes, her corgis are herding dogs. A lot of people don't appreciate that. Corgis are herding dogs, despite their goofy proportions. Um, and, and so, yeah, someday, I mean, look, I've, as you can probably tell, I've researched this one and really thought about it. Um, and uh, yeah, but, but, but that's a ways off. So, so let's not get ahead of us. Are you going to get milk cows or a goat from upstate New York? So, so Brennan, I don't have any intention of getting milk cows just yet. Um, I, I, you know, maybe at some point, but, uh, not anytime soon. It, it's in same thing. And I have no intention of ever getting goats. I think, you know, dairy is a hard thing to do. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of work. But quite frankly, I don't feel like I'm quite ready to put into it yet. And, um, and, and I, I would like, you know, really want to think about how to approach it. And so I, I don't foresee it anytime soon. May, you know, Scottish Highlanders are dual purpose breed. And so probably the first thing you'd see me doing is experimenting with milk gang, some of the cattle that I get. So we'll see. Oh, thank you, Garrett. I appreciate that support. That's very nice of you, man. That's right. Not gas. Uh, Toby is two years old. All right. I'm running behind here. Is the P.O. Box still open? Yeah, Romer. So, yeah, um, again, if folks want, I'm going to do another plug here. If you guys want free stickers, these are free. Nothing. It will cost you nothing other than sending me an envelope with a stamp on it so that I can send this back to you with the stickers. And so um, they are, um, you know, all you have to do is send it to Goldshaw Farm, P.O. Box 225, Peachum, Vermont, 05862. You'll probably see it down below in the the... Uh, video description if you're looking for that address oh and look at mallory she's she nailed it yes that's that's the address right there all right marissa mag hello my son is texting me you lol my son julian and jj are biggest fans they watch your videos every day after school oh well that's great thank you marissa thank you julian thank you jj 
I really appreciate the support from you guys. It's really, really cool. Um, bu -bu -bu. Hey, Morgan, I have a flock of chickens that I think caught coccidosis because we're losing five a day of young birds. Have you experienced, you know why it happens? Uh, so coccidosis, you know, yeah, I mean, it's a hygiene thing, really, is, is kind of probably your biggest culprit tip most of the time with coccidosis. I, I thought I might have coccidosis when I was losing a lot of the runner ducks, but I, I don't think and and um, I don't think that like it would be necessarily that was what the problem was with the runner ducks, but maybe not. I'm really sorry, Bob. I, you know, there's some really good online resources. I'd suggest just, you know, kind of looking into that on the coccidosis side. Um, but yeah, that's a tough situation. Oh, hey, Copper Kettle Farm. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And uh, thanks for thinking me as a different voice. I know it is. A, I know a lot of people don't agree with me. I, I don't try to throw it in folks' faces. I, like I said, personally believe you can believe what you want. I mean, and I, I, I'm, I got lots of friends who believe a lot of things on the ideological spectrums. And I think one of the biggest challenges with us as a society is that we've become so... Um, close off in terms of people who believe things that are different than us. And I, I don't think that that's right. Um, what do you think about miniature Zebu cattle eventually? I don't know. I mean, I'm a, I, I think those are like an African breed, right? I'm not sure they're necessarily climate appropriate. Um, maybe, but thank you for the, the uh, super chat, chat there, Texas fair girl. Oh, I love me some urban rescue ranch with my buddy Ben. Yeah. You know, there might be some crossover activity. I'm not going to spoil it, but uh, look for it next year. Um, yeah, wow, that's all I'm going to say. But yeah, Ben's doing some cool stuff. If you guys don't know Urban Rescue Ranch, it's a great channel. Um, great guy, Ben, who, who runs it. And uh, yeah. Well, thank you, Chloe. I appreciate the support there. Your grandparents had a farm in Vermont and had a Marema. So we watched, Oh, that's really cool. What, I'm curious, Chloe, where, where did they have a Marema? Cause I mean, there's, there's, I know of like three farms, four farms in Vermont that are Marema farms. So um, I'd be curious to hear kind of where. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, Harry Gold. Well, thank you for the support there. Why did I want the turtle? Um, it's a long story. <laughs> um, my wife and I are moving to Vermont, New Hampshire in a year to to homestead. Any advice on finding land? We've never purchased land before, so any kind of advice would be welcome. Love your channel. Well, that's a really good question there, Imperial uh, Scorpius 2. A um, couple things. I think number one, really get to know the community that you want to move to. Like, okay, so you like the idea of living in Northern New England. I, I, I fully endorse that. I think it's a great place to live. What are you looking for? Cause I mean, look, Vermont, and New Hampshire are so different, right? Like Vermont is the freedom and unity state. Like that's actually our state motto. Meanwhile, New Hampshire is live free or die. Those two philosophies are at the core of each of those states. And so I would really think about what you're looking for as you're trying to select which state you live in, because um, I, I think it, that matters. So that would be the first suggestion. I think the second one would be, you know, once you identify the region, so do you want to live in Southern Vermont? Do you want to live in like the North country of New Hampshire? Um, you know, there, you know, once you have that region, I'd, I'd try to suggest finding a realtor. You're going to find better properties that way. Generally speaking has been my experience. <laughs> Okay, repeating what a super chat said, but got lost in translation. You do have, they are feathers. <laughs> yes, we do. We, you know, I mean, I, I think, Tracy, thank you for the super chat. And I think you make a great point. And it sometimes gets lost on folks. Like, yeah, like part of, you know, I don't think I would have the time or energy to do everything I do with the farm if I was raising kids. And, and, and so, yeah, like, you know, that energy, that nurturing energy gets channeled in other places. And, and I, I don't know, I think for me, that kind of works. Do we have gophers? You know, Garrett, we really don't have gophers. Thank you for the super chat again. Thank you for the support, Garrett. I really appreciate it. Um, we don't have gophers. 
you know, we, you know, they're just not around in this area. We do have moles, um, but the barn cats generally make some pretty quick work of them. So they're not really by the barn or the house. Um, they don't last long around here. Well, thank you for joining here, Christina or Christine. Sorry. Are there some nutrition pellets you need for the cattle? So no. So, so the cattle are going to be hundred percent grass fed. So, so the idea is I only feed them, um, uh, uh, like grass or hay. So, you know, they, they will graze the pasture in the months when they can, then I will feed them those big marshmallow, marshmallow bales of hay when the snow's too deep. And, um, like, uh, basically, um, the plan is that like, that would be all I feed them. I don't want to give them grain. I don't want to give them corn. Just, you know, they are ruminants. They're meant to eat grass. That's like biologically how they they've evolved. And so I want, I really want to do that as a treat. I actually plan on using alfalfa cubes. Um, and, and so that's, that's the plan there. Mm, excuse me. <laughs> okay. I got to keep pace here. Woof. This is going fast. Cody plays games. Thank you, Cody. Are you selling your calves? So my plan would be not necessarily to be selling calves, at least in the first few years. So as these cattle actually show up on the farm, what's going to happen is I will try to keep breeding the females. Um, I'm still trying to figure out between AI and a bull. That's a whole separate conversation. Once that happens, um, what, like when they have, when they calve, if it's a male, I will raise it and, and band it and, uh, make it a steer. And, and so those steers would end up becoming the, the meat that we harvest the females. I'd actually keep using to add to the flock and growing the flock for the first few years. So I don't expect to sell many animals in the first couple of years. Hey, what's going on, Jack? So, so yeah, so there you go. So, so while I'm in Vermont, Jack is in New Hampshire and, um, you know, back to the folks who were asking about kind of the distinction between Vermont and New Hampshire. I mean, like, it's just a different spot. I mean, you, you just you get a different vibe to it for sure. Yeah, you know, Uncle Ben is the king Fortnite, Minecraft, you know, gamer. <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't do it the way he does it. It's pretty great, though. Have you ever thought about making an FAQ to deal with the questions you get every live stream? You know what, Ray was here. That's an outstanding idea. I should do that um, because, yeah, like you know, are you gonna get you know this animal or that animal? I, get, I feel like I get that question all the time. Um, when's the puppy coming? That one always gets asked, um, and and you know, I do have some new news tonight. But yeah, sometimes it's sort of repetitive. So I think that's a great idea. I should, if I can get my act together, I will try to do that. Okay, I'm running behind again. Who taught you how to beekeep? I used to beekeep and a couple of things I'm doing wrong. Um, so there's a couple people and I don't want to throw them under the bus. So I, I, I am learning. I, I have two bee mentors who have been helping me. I'm, I'm doing my best. If, you, if there's something specific though, you guys ever see that I'm doing wrong, tell me. I, I really am open to that feedback and I will not be offended in the least bit. Nate McPeak, thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you, Mason. I, I also appreciate that. Love your channel. I have a small holding, which those of you guys in the United States, they, they call homestead small holdings in, in the UK. Uh, just under 50 acres on the North Yorkshire Moors. Ooh, that's a beautiful area. And love comparing how you do things to how I do. Great content. Thank you, Mason. I really appreciate that support. Oh, another one. Anthony Scott, thank you. Happened upon your channel the other week. Enjoying the content. Just want to show us ah, Thank you. You guys are so sweet. And uh, yeah, just so you guys know, all the super chats tonight are going to the the dog and cat food fund. So it's it's really appreciated. Um, thank you, Alejandro. Shout out from Nicaragua. Wow, I can't believe that like the channel goes that far. Why shouldn't we give bread to ducks? Okay, let me try to answer this one. So you know, ducks they have a crop, and that crop. Um, is sort of how they break down the food that they eat and digest it and mash it around and then swallow it and then it absorb the nutrients into their like stomach and intestinal linings. Um, oftentimes, if they eat too much bread, that bread can actually get stuck in their crop and they can get something known as sour crop, which is like almost like 
it just gets all disgusting and rancid inside them and starts to rot inside them. And so it's just like horrible for them. And, and so, um, you know, I think, uh, basically it, like it can, it just can kill them. And so, so that, that's the main reason why the other reason is just nutritionally, it's just not all that good for them. Um, and so like, you know, there's just better things that they could eat. So like whole grains or oats are just better for them at corn. And so, yeah, like that, that would be why. Okay, Catboy, have you ever played video games? Of course, Catboy, I've, I've definitely played video games. I, I actually used to be a video game junkie. Like, I would hardcore, especially in my, tw- like, you know, as a kid, I played a ton of video games. As a teenager, I played a ton of video games. In my 20s, I played a lot of video games. It really wasn't until, like, my mid-30s that I stopped. And the reason I stopped was I found that I was just spending too much time getting kind of sucked into the world of video games and and actually ever since i stopped was where i really got the time and energy to devote things like learning about farming and ultimately trying to buy a farm and ultimately moving to the farm and now i could couldn't even imagine spending the time on video games and so i don't game anymore i love gaming i think i just get too addicted to it so it's probably not good for me personally that doesn't mean it's not good for other people um and so yeah that's where i'm at Okay, what other questions here? Thank you, Tracy Ricker. How's Bucket Duck doing? So Bucket Duck is fully healed, Tracy. So Bucket Duck is is out. She's back with the rest of the Quacken. And um, yeah, she she is doing really well. There is um, another duck out there. And I'm trying to make you, Crystal, I just tried to make you a mod and I can't figure out how to do it from here sorry I'll, I'll do it for next time though i really appreciate the help um so anyway bucket duck is good downside is i just had another duck the other day uh two days ago uh start to come up a little bit lame and so i'm soaking her as a precautionary measure it's not really a bad bumble it was like just the beginning of it and and so uh yeah hopefully she'll be okay but bucket duck is doing great hey thank you sean friedman <sighs> How old is Ron Swanson, Sean? Um, Ron Swanson is, she was born in April of 2020. So like a year and a half. Rapid fire top five games. Okay, Blake, here we go. Um, I, I'm going to call the Grand Theft Auto series as one. Um, the uh, Red Dead Redemption. I, I actually never played the second one, but the first one I was way into. I call another one. Um, so I'm really into those types of games. Uh, Ma- the Madden series, I've also always been a huge fan of. Uh, Baseball Stars is a legendary Nintendo game that I'm still obsessed with, I think about. Um, I, I love the civil- Civilization games. Uh, those were great. And uh, what else would I throw in my, my top five? Uh, Civilization. I don't know. I'm probably forgetting some that I'm just absolutely crazy about. Um Oh, the Final Fantasy games are pretty rad, too. Yeah. I did the Bucket Duck. (laughs) Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. Uh, Yeah, I'm not sure I would recommend that approach for chickens. I I probably should put a disclaimer on that. Um, Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. That's awful. Uh, Yeah, because I could see it, especially if you put too much water in, like, you know, you don't need when when I do the bucket duck method too. Just so you guys know, I don't do a lot of water. It's like you know, two or three inches of water in there, and uh, yeah, so I don't do a lot. So Nate asks, "Will I be selling more eggs?" Uh, so eating eggs, I still sell locally around here, um, and and so I don't plan on uh, you know selling any like hatching eggs at least for a little while now, um, just because like we're sort of out of season. And so I, I probably will start back up in like February or March, both for goose and duck hatching eggs, but not, not right now. Kevin, have you considered contacting the people at meat eater podcast to talk about hound hunting laws in Vermont? I feel like guys would have a great conversation. I'd be totally up for it. I'll look into that. Um, I'm not familiar with the meat eater podcast. Um, but, uh, no, look, I'm a meat eater. I'm happy to talk about it. <laughs> 
So the new puppy, I should have said this, is a Maremma. So she is going to be a purebred Maremma. Um, my goal is to become an ethical purebred Maremma breeder. That is my plan. Do you play? Oh, that's a good name for. <laughs> so Christina, I um, I don't anymore. I don't have the time. I still play fantasy baseball. Um, I'm still in actually two fantasy ba baseball leagues. And, um, so, but yeah, I don't, I haven't played fantasy football in a little while now. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I've, as I've gotten older, I've just lost interest in football in general. I think a little bit, I know it's probably sacrilege for some folks. That's a great team name though. What exactly is Bumblefoot and how do the birds get it? So Bumblefoot is essentially like a, uh, an infection or abscess in the foot of the birds. Usually the way it's caused is a combination of them getting some sort of cut. And then like bacteria or, or, you know, gunk getting in there and infecting it. And then that infection builds up and swells up and then they have a hard time walking. So that's generally what it is. You know, the, the, the way I prefer to try to treat it is by soaking it out and soaking out the, the infected pus and grossness. Um, you can also do surgery, which I've had to do a couple of times as well, where you go in there and you cut it out. Um, but I don't like to do that because you know, it creates more risk, I find, because when you cut open a duck's foot, then it's got like this big open wound that's susceptible to more bacteria and more infection. And and, and it's really hard to keep a duck foot clean. Um, and, and so that's why I'm not a fan of, of trying to do it that way. But if you have to do it, you have to do it. I prefer the soaking because it's a lot less invasive. <laughs> Uh, I would say bot frosty. I've learned a lot. Um, definitely, uh, the biggest thing I, and I just posted a TikTok on this topic today by chance. Um, you know, so, so basically like what I would say is the biggest thing is nature is not always going to do what you expect. And so you have to be ready to pivot your business plan. So specifically I was expecting 150 geese to hatch. I didn't but I was able to pivot my business plan a little bit where I think I'm going to about make the same amount of money from geese this year. Just it'll be a little bit different than I did last year. Um, I missed your joke, Amelia. I'm sorry. Try it again. Maybe I'll, I'll I'm always up for a good joke. Did you know breeding Toby increased the puppy problem and health risk for the mom? What's your thoughts on this? Yeah. So, so it's funny. I actually posted some stuff on Instagram today and folks or yesterday, I think, and, and some folks were pretty upset about it. Um, so let me talk about this and, and this is a, this is a tough one because it's not exactly a black or white answer. Yes. If you do breeding the wrong way, it's problematic for the dogs, but I actually really want to work hard to be an ethical breeder. And specifically that means some things that means doing certif health certifications like the OFA testing that I got for Toby, as well as some genetic testing I've already done for Toby. That means, you know, making sure that I'm only selling puppies to people who are the right for them, you know, Marema puppies and specifically the types of puppies I plan to raise, which are going to be well suited for, um, you know, for, for poultry farms um, it's a special type of raising you have to do for, for the animals, especially since puppydom. And so my intention is to get those dogs used to, uh, poultry so that they're sold to poultry farms. And so that's, I'm not going to be selling them to people as pets. So just, just so people know this right out of the gate, my intention is not like, if you want like a nice family dog and you're like, I'd love to have, you know, Toby's son as my family dog. That will not be something I do. It, you have to have a farm before I will sell you an animal. And, and so that's that's kind of where it comes to. Hey, by the way, uh, CMDR Mowitz, I really appreciate that. Um, the salutations from Argentina. I was wondering if you have any climate change in your mind and how it might affect the farm in the long term. Yeah, that's an outstanding question. Um, I can't seem to find it so I can pin it. I don't know. Oh, there it is. Um so, so that's a great question. So number one, just so everybody knows, and like, if you disagree, fine, but I'm just going to tell you, I believe this hardcore. Our climate is changing. Man-made actions have a big role in it. And I think that there's going to be a significant shift over the next 15, 20 years. And I think we're seeing it as we speak in terms of greater volatility with the weather, uh, warmer, drier climate, particularly for here in Vermont. Um, I think the biggest thing that I need to think about is how do I manage and maintain water on my farm? A big part of that is 
really building organic matter into the soil so that I'm capturing more rainfall. It's things like the swales and berms, like you see on the side of the hill. It's things like adding more trees. It's things like rotationally grazing cattle so that I keep adding more organic matter onto the farm and soaking up that water as it comes like a sponge. Those are some of the biggest things I'm thinking about as from a climate change perspective. Also water conservation, also probably having multiple wells around the farm because I can't just rely on one. Those are the big things I think about in terms of what I need to do. But outstanding question. And thank you for the super chat, by the way. All right. N Nettie and Alex. I'm sorry, guys. I keep rubbing my nose because I was petting Lil and, you know, I'm allergic to cats. I battled bad bumblefoot with my indoor duck, Ming Mei successfully so i have a bunch of good treatment and recovery i'd be happy to send you i'd love to see it ming may uh, or i'm sorry <laughs> that's your duck's name Nettie and alex the duck people if you guys want to send me like an email or dm somewhere i'd, I'd be i'd love to see that because i'm always looking for good ways to combat bumblefoot thank you allison number one tip for newbie getting backyard chickens yes it's legal um don't get too many <laughs> You know, people always joke about chicken math and people always joke about like, you know, you know, oh, well, I just wanted four chickens. So I have 14. Um, start with like six or less. I think you'll you'll find that that's going to be plenty unless you have like a huge family. You're going to have more than enough. Uh, um, you're going to have more than enough eggs. Start small. Make sure you have good predator protection. So like uh, don't use chicken wire, use hardware cloth. Um, yeah, the predator proofing is a biggie. And uh, make sure you give them enough space. I think a lot of people sometimes, especially backyard chickens, they might be a little too tight with their enclosure. If you're tight with your enclosure, that means you've got to add a lot of like wood chips or hay or straw as bedding so that you're piling it up and they're not spending too much time on their own manure. Are you going to do other beef products in addition? Yes. So Trace, the thinking I have is that the the, the um, biltong and or jerky would be something I can send and, and sell through the mail. So for like folks on YouTube, like you guys can like order it and, and you'd be able to get to it. Um, when it comes to like other things like say ground beef, I'd sell that locally or just even use it to stock our own freezer. <laughs> What do you suck the duck? I'm mean, going to guess that that's in reference to Bumblefoot. So what I find is a combination of warm water and Epsom salts works best. So Smoggy, unfortunately, this is a bad answer. And um, no, so I don't actually fulfill my merchandise. So I work with a company who does that. So I'm not like stuffing the orders for the t-shirts. If I was, I would definitely be taking like handfuls of these pins and stickers and tossing them in every envelope. But unfortunately I'm not doing that. So I can't, and there's like no way to like automate sending them in like that. So unfortunately I can't, but if you want to send me a self-addressed stamped envelope, PO box 225 Peachum, Vermont 05862, I will happily send anybody who sends me a self-addressed stamped envelope, these stickers. So go right ahead. Ken Rocket Man says he's watching for Toby Dog. Well, Ken, Toby Dog's watching for coyotes outside. So um Yeah, so so he he can't be on these. Sorry. So this is actually uh this is some tea. So um especially this time of night, I'm I'm usually drinking herbal tea. If I drank coffee or even caffeinated tea right about now. Uh, I would be like wired for the next three hours and I, I wouldn't be able to handle that. I'm really enjoying your farm show. We only have five chickens and one's a rooster. Well, that's good. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a great way to start and, and good, good on you. Um, Eli Lammers asks, what type of chestnut trees do you have? So we have a mix and, and there's a reason very intentionally have a mix. So we have a combination of American chestnut, Chinese chestnut and hybrid Chinese American, as well as uh, the Dunstan chestnut. Those varieties are all like trying to mix together. And really what I'm trying to do is just get a whole diverse set of genetics here on the farm, hopefully finding trees that are blight resistant and then growing more of those trees that are blight resistant um and and so yeah we we've got pretty diverse uh months 
Oh, Sarah, thank you. Yes, tell your son I absolutely love the swan. I actually meant to make a TikTok of it in the next day or two. It's downstairs in the mudroom. I actually have the letter and the origami swan that he made. It's so good. So tell him thank you. Thank you very much. And if you watch the TikTok, you should see a video come out soon about that. <laughs> Why not just Toby? Why Toby Dog? I don't know. I always just call him Toby Dog for some reason. I mean, Toby is is actually just his nickname. I mean, for those of you guys who know, right, he is, and, and you know, he's got such a regal portrait back there. He is Sir Bartleby de Mimsy Porpington, Earl of Caledonia County. That's his actual full name. Um, I call him Toby Dog for short. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's just like a syllables thing for me. I, you know, uh, there was a punk rock bassist for the band 15, uh, who went by the name Lucky Dog. And I think I always liked that. And so Toby Dog and Lucky Dog have kind of the same cadence to it. And I think that that's probably why it is. So Carlisle, I don't know where Lil is. Usually, usually she is like right there in her post. Like that seat right there is Lil Barncat's seat in my office. And she spends a whole heck of a lot of the day right there. Um, but she, I don't know where she is tonight. I think she's downstairs. She might be looking for mice. So this time of year, like in the fall, we have like more mice trying to sneak into the house. And what's been awesome this year is, you know, last year, Lil was still a little too hurt to, to do too much. This year, she has been like on a rampage killing mice left and right. Um, and, and so, yeah, she's probably downstairs doing murder as we speak. Elvira, I am very happy, by the way. I'm super pumped. I, I am just in fo case folks wonder my sporting allegiances. Um, I'm a big Red Sox fan, and, and baseball is probably my fa baseball and hockey are my two favorite sports, but huge Red Sox fan. I'm a Patriots fan, Celtics fan, and a Washington Capitals fan, which I know is going to be weird. The reason I'm a Washington Capitals fan, and I've said this before, I grew up a diehard Hartford Whalers fan as a kid but they killed my team. And so I went about a good 20 years without even having a hockey allegiance, even though I love the sport of hockey. And um, when I was living in Washington, DC, my buddy, Troy, um, he actually started taking me to capitals games and man, I just got hooked into it big time. And, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm a huge caps fan. Um, I know it's weird, but that's how I roll. My husband told me to stop acting like a flamingo. So he, <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> I walked into that one. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat there, Allison. <laughs> Thank you for the laugh too. <laughs> hey Morgan, me and my boyfriend are huge fans. Any advice for starting in future homesteaders? So Lexi, um, thank you. And I appreciate that. Um, you know, so I, I, I would say that the things that, um, I would say for a starter, I think number one, read a lot, read books, really think about it. Number two, um, you know, the more you can practice and do things at a small scale, the better. Like when I lived in DC, well, actually when I lived in New York, we were growing tomatoes on the rooftop. When I lived in DC, we ripped up our front yard and, and put in garden beds. Like I couldn't have animals there. I couldn't do like bigger things, but I was able to do some small things there. And I think that was a good start. I would suggest that. And I think the third thing is visit farms. Like go to your local f farmer's market, meet some of the farmers, get to know them, become friendly with them, maybe even see if they need some help. That to me is actually one of the best ways to kind of start to see things close up. And so as you're starting to have your visions and dreams of what you guys want for your homestead, you'll then be able to kind of convert that into um, uh, like, uh, like what your actual place looks like in the future. Whoa. So Crystal, wait, so is it, um, one of the biggest, is it the Russian machine never breaks because that's my favorite capitals blog by far. Like it's such an enjoyable read. I don't know if you guys read it. The Russian machine never breaks. It's a, it's an OV reference, but it's great. And, uh, yeah, it's, it'd be funny if, if your friend runs that. Yeah, Bradley, it was wicked tough. You know, I gotta say, you know, the trauma of losing a sports team to relocation um is it's tough man i mean i don't know not tough compared to other horrible things in life but it definitely sucks <laughs> like, i mean i was bummed out and and law uh loudly thank you for the uh super chat thank you 
How have the new barn cats been working out? Have you seen them catching anything? So Molly, the barn cat, she has a new nickname around the farm and that is Molly murder mittens. Molly has been nailing mice and she's one of those cats. She, so Pablo barn cat will kill a mouse and eat that mouse. Molly won't kill. She'll kill for sure. She's killed a bunch of them, but she's like a, a gift giver. So I keep finding mice on the doorstep that are all courtesy of Molly. Um, and, and so, yeah, she's been doing really good. Um, yeah. So Lauren, honestly, not really. Um, you know, Lil, like in the summer months, she'll like sit in this window and hang out and look out the window and that's fine for her. She's never tried to escape the house like ever. Um, she's really good about just staying inside. She's pretty happy. I think she's actually made the conversion into being a house cat and uh, has embraced it. And so, yeah, no, I don't see us doing uh, like a catio or anything. Yeah, Molly Murder Mittens. I, I, I think Molly Murder Mittens might be, as we're working on the new merchandise right now, that might be a new uh, t-shirt. Yeah, she kind of does do it for saw so uh, for sausage. She does do it for sports sausage toes. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think that that's true too, Meg. Like, I mean, Pablo kills and eats. Like, he's like a sustenance hunt hunter. Um, Lil was always like a killer who could just go for anything she found, and and Molly seems to be the same way. Ginny hasn't been doing much, and she's like been like I said earlier, she's in lockdown right now. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> do you fear the barn? Do you feed the barn cats or do they feed them? I feed the barn cats. I feed the barn cats because I think it's actually important for a couple of reasons. One, I think it's just, it's better nutrition for them. And we really try to take care of them. They are working animals on our farm, but you know, much like Toby, we give them love and a little more nurturing than say like livestock around the farm. Two, by feeding the barn cats, it keeps them from ranging too far. So they stay closer to the house and the barn which is where I really need them to uh, control the rodents. Thank you, Cal Calissa. I really appreciate that super sticker. Yeah, I'm curious, what did the super stickers look like? Because as I'm, I do these and like I do the chat in Streamyard, and so I can't quite see everything that's going on. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, it's tough to see, but but I I really appreciate it. All right. I think I'm losing my steam, guys. So we'll do, take a couple more here. Yes, I will absolutely. I, I have been diligently watching my trail cameras, as you guys are going to see in a couple of videos over the next few weeks. There are um, a lot of checking of trail cameras that I've been doing and um, watching the patterns on the deer. There's a couple of stags I got hanging out that I've been seeing a lot of. And so, yes, I will definitely be out there trying to fill the freezer. Um, you know, I guess I kind of know what it's like. I mean, look, I, I had the farm. I didn't get the farm until we bought the farm when I was 36, I moved to the farm when I was 38. Uh, and I've, so I've been here, you know, well, three and a half years or so, almost four years. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, I don't know. It's, I mean, I, I would miss it if I didn't have it. That's hundred percent true. Like when I went to the Bahamas, it was weird not to have to wake up and do chores. And it felt my, my day felt all screwed up. What are the what are the legal problems? Because because you missed a super chat saying, oh, "I'm sorry, I missed the super chat." I've been trying to keep up with these the best I can, and and I apologize uh, to whoever that was. Um, the legal problem. So here's the legal problem. So I've actually had two of them. Um, number one, I got like a cease and desist letter the other day, and I can't even say what it is. My lawyer told me not to. But um, basically from a, uh, an organization that I criticized in a video recently, which kind of like drives me nuts because it's like the grounds that it was was simply, you know, you're, you're damaging our business by criticizing us. But like, I think sometimes folks are too sensitive to criticism. Like if you're doing something that's not right and somebody criticizes you, yeah, that might damage your business. But um it's it's uh not necessarily um like i don't know it's not libel or slander and and so act right and people won't be criticizing you is kind of how i see it 
So that, that's the one, one thing I'm dealing with. And the other one is I've been getting threats from some of the hound hunting folks that I might have a lawsuit. So just fair warning, guys, there might come a time. So it hasn't happened yet, but there might come a time when I can't talk about it. And if that's the case, just know that it's probably got something to do with this. So uh, because a lot of times you really can't or shouldn't comment on uh, pending litigation. And so if that happens, just know that that's what's going on. And so, yeah, that, that's actually what I want to talk about in this live stream. Just kind of say something preemptively. <laughs> hey, Jeremy Christopher. Great uh, avatar, by the way. Hey, I really love your content. You are number one on my list of people I immediately click on when I see it. Hope things are going well. How long is it between filming and publishing for you? Uh, it's about two weeks, a week and a half, two weeks usually. Ten days maybe-ish is the average. Um, you know, because really it takes a lot of time to edit the YouTube videos if you ever want more immediate stuff, and I know I said this earlier tonight, but like uh, on TikTok and Instagram, I do all that stuff just like right on my phone for the most part. And so it happens much, much quicker. On uh, YouTube, it takes me longer. I also actually have a, a friend of mine, uh, Valerie. She does an amazing job of a lot of the editing that you see there. And, uh, you know, kind of it goes from like me uploading the video, Valerie editing it. I usually then take a crack at it when, when I get back from her. And, and so... That process kind of adds a couple days, um, and so so it's yeah, ten days is maybe the average, Jeremy. All right, two more questions here. So I'm fading. Okay, this is a good one, Jesse Felix. What are your plans for Toby's future puppies? So the plans for Toby's future puppies would be we'd actually sell them as one of the farm enterprises, and so. Um, you know, basically I would breed Toby with this female that we get and we raise a very limited amount of puppies, you know, a handful a year, essentially. And we would actually be raising them as poultry livestock guard dogs. So similar to what Toby is today, you know, I, I, I know that there's a lot of folks who need that and they don't quite know how to train them and so that's going to be a big part of what we do and I, so it's something i've gotten to be pretty good at myself and i really enjoy doing and um so i i uh i i really want to do it i mean that's really what it comes down to i know there's a lot of folks who are like well why don't you just adopt like rescue great pyrenees that people got from backyard breeders that you know didn't work in a suburban house and, and the reason is a dog like that's not going to necessarily be good with poultry. And, and so like, you know, I'm really trying to fill a need for specific farms as I'm doing the breeding. That's, that's my why um, when it comes down to it. Why don't you learn Italian? You have an Italian dog. I don't know. I look, I'm Italian myself. Um, but you know, I don't know. I'm just horrible at learning languages. I know a bit of Spanish. So I guess maybe Italian wouldn't be, um, uh, too hard. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I, I really hope that that's not the case for today. <laughs> like I, that'd be a challenge. Okay. Michigan animals. You're betting 20 bucks that I won't get cattle this year. You're on my friend. Let's go. I will see you next month in this next farm meeting. And I don't know if I can get my Wi-Fi to work outside. You'll see me in front of cattle guaranteed money in the bank. Michigan animals. I hope to see that super chat come in from you then. <laughs> when you make videos, do you use a Mac or PC? I want to make YouTube videos, but I don't know how I uh, use for editing. You keep on missing this. I, I want to know. I'm sorry, Marie. I tried so hard to catch as many of these questions as possible. So here, so, so number one, I made a video, I don't know, three or four months ago about how I make my videos. That's a good video to watch. I use a Mac. I use a, actually the computer I'm on right now. And the computer I do all my editing on is a uh, Mac mini. And um, yeah, I, it's a great little computer. It's cheap. It's like less than a thousand dollars and it works great. Um, and, and so that's what I use. Um, I also did a series of videos with my friend, Jessica Sowards of Roots and, Re Roots and Refuge Farm. And um, we did like four videos talking about how to start a YouTube channel, particularly if it's about a farm or a homestead. And, and so that's also really good to watch. And so if you just search Roots, Roots and Refuge, make videos or something like that, Goldshaw Farm, make videos, you'll find those videos. Those would be the things. Smoggy, you're right. 
I, 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 I definitely think it makes sense. Smoggy, if you shoot me an email through my website and, and just mention that you're Smoggy, if it shows up as a different name, well, you and I, let's figure this out. I, I really appreciate it. Okay. That's a hundred percent true, Gabe. You know, look, I actually will say I do a ton of editing these days right here on my phone. Like I will use my phone to cut everything you see on TikTok, basically. You know what, Elvira? We actually don't. And, and so here's the reason why we don't allow visitors on the farm right now. And, and I've had to turn some folks away recently and I feel bad, but it comes down to this. Um, I have a day job. I have such limited amounts of time and I like taking the time to meet with people. The farm is not necessarily set up for visitors and kind of, so like all of those things make it really hard to, to accept visitors. At some point I want to try to set myself up where I actually start doing like farm days where like I have a couple times a year where like anybody who wants to come to the farm can and visit and hang out. And, and if I can get that together, maybe for next year, that would be the real goal. USPS doesn't accept. Um, that's a good question, Lummel. I, I don't know. Um, let me, you know what, Lummel? I'm going to take this question. I'm going to look into it and see if there is a way to um, send self addressed stamped envelopes outside of the US because I'd love to send you some stickers. Um, and and Lummel, if you just send me a letter, I'll, I'll send you some stickers, Lummel. <laughs> That's a really good idea too. Let me try to do that links. I, th I think, yeah, I mean, they happen every month and I've been doing it for almost a year now where, where it's been like this. So, so yeah, I think I could do that. I don't know if it was meant as a joke, but I, so yeah. So, so the answer is I will not be getting flamingos. I was thinking about it. So unlike the tigers, which I never intended to get tigers ever. And that was always meant as a joke completely. Um, I was actually seriously saying, like I did the thought exercise, like, could you raise a flamingo in Vermont? And the answer is you could, but it probably wouldn't be great. Hey, how do you make cages and fences so well? I don't know if I do. <laughs> um, you know, so it's a combination of things. I mean, um, you know, a, a post hole digger makes a big difference. Um, a, uh, T post driver is also huge. Uh, and if like you're doing cages or, you know, stuff with like hardware cloth, I actually find that, um, uh, like, a like, a, a staple gun that like hooks up to a compressor is so much better than using a hand stapler. That's probably my best tip. Um, and if you're actually looking for a recommendation for like a chicken tractor or house, the one that I recommend to everybody is from my buddy, John Siskovich. So John is a farmer down in my home state of Connecticut. He designed a chicken tractor that is the best chicken tractor that's out there. It's relatively lightweight. It's super functional. You can use it like for all sorts of different things, raising ducks. I have like my egg layers in it right now. It's awesome. And it probably cost you about, I don't know, when I built them a couple years ago, it was about 350 bucks. It might be a little bit more in terms of materials. So it's a little more expensive than some of the cheap ones but it's so worth it. And so John sells his plans online. You look for farm marketing solutions, um, chicken tractor or John Siskovich chicken tractor or John Siskovich stress-free chicken tractor. It's the best one. Spend the 20 bucks or whatever it is John charges to, to sell the digital version of the plans. It's worth it because it gives you a book that tells you all about how to build it. And, and, and so I highly recommend it. And, you know, don't try to find the plans on the internet because it's like the dude, like, you know, he's got a family. He's trying to, you know, feed his family, you know, and 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 so um, I would just recommend buying it. You won't regret having those plans. Um, you know, ceiling, maybe for woofers, I might do something. Um, so I'm not sure. Maybe. Like it's it's I'm not quite set up for interns, I'm not quite set up for woofers and farm stays. Um, the work support that I need usually isn't like that either. Usually what I need is more skilled labor to like help me build certain things or do certain tasks. And so, uh, yeah, I don't think that I'll do that anytime soon. What address for stamps? 79 church street. That's what it says. No. So send it to our PO box. Um, 
what you'll want to send it to, uh, and by the way, Allison, thank you for that super chat. Um, Goldshaw Farm, P.O. Box 225, Peachum, Vermont, 05862. If you send it there, I'll get it. You'll see the address. If you scroll down in the description of this video, you'll see it down there too. We've raised chickens, ducks, and now Maremma. You raised a pu Maremma puppy in there. That's awesome, Mike. That's great. Yeah, no, they, they are the most versatile crate cage. Like, it's just basically a big, like, house. It's, like, six by ten. So it's, it's, a, it's pretty spacious, but it's easy for you as a person to walk in there and get the animals versus, like, the if you do, like, the Joel Salatin-style chicken tractors, which are cool and lots of people do them, and they're very much cheaper to make. Like you're constantly trying to dig in there and like crawling around trying to get the birds out. Not nearly as good. Uh, what's your favorite meat? Duck, goose, or chicken? I will go with goose. I think goose meat is probably my favorite type of poultry meat. Would you ever commercialize your cider production? I'd love to try some golds. You know, um, maybe. So a good friend of mine uh, by the name of Jeff actually has a brewery and if you guys ever are in st johnsbury vermont check it out it's whirly gig brewery they make some amazing beers and he and i have kicked around the idea of doing some sort of cider product from the farm um where we just kind of go around and harvest all the wild apples press them like you've seen us doing videos use wild yeast but actually do it commercial style with jeff's brewery um so we've kicked that idea around uh we're i don't have my act together this year to do it but maybe next year but uh, Whirly Gig Brewery, check it out. Totally great stuff there. All right, I am winding down here. All right, HL Esterly says, $5. Thank you for that super chat. Hi, just had our first loss from a broken leg on our tiny homestead. Feeling a bit like failure. Any advice? Um, wait, did, did you break your leg or did a bird like break your leg? Or did another animal? Um, look, but here's what I say. Whether it's you <laughs> a bird a goat a cow anything like when you have a loss like that it sucks it never feels good your intention is always to be successful and sometimes you're not going to be and that's a huge part of farming that's a huge part of homesteading is failing and learning from what you did wrong and then making sure you kind of get back up and not do that again and find ways to prevent that from happening in the future. That's going to be a huge part of it. You know, it's, I think to the couple who, who asked the question earlier tonight about things to get ready for, I mean, get ready for failure. Failure is a part of it, but what it, what it is, is it's an opportunity to learn. It's an opportunity to make yourself better. And I mean, I know that that's not just homesteading, that's life, but, but you know, if you're struggling, if you're feeling down on yourself right now, don't beat yourself up too much. Just focus on what didn't go right and what you can do in the future. Okay, guys, I have to check out. I'm, I'm exhausted. I've been up since like five o'clock today, but I appreciate you guys hanging out tonight. I appreciate the conversation. I will be back next month, first Wednesday of the month. Uh, I don't know exactly the date it is, but I'll be back. And uh, to whoever that guy was who I made the bet with on the $20 for the cows, they will be here, guaranteed. And uh, Crystal, I will definitely make you a moderator between now and then, too. Um, and, and so I really appreciate the help. And I will talk to you guys really soon. And uh, new video tomorrow. The new video tomorrow is all about solar grazing. And then there's going to be a video later this week about Toby and Ginny Barncat and their potential friendship. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great night.